Asian Americans are on a mission to make us appreciate boba milk tea the way we appreciate fine quality coffee. They call themselves the Boba Guys, and they run a pop-up restaurant with the same name in San Francisco, which is creating quite a buzz. Ben Chen is Boba Guy number one. He says he's the right brain side. He works as an art director by day and applies those same skills to Boba Guys by night. Andrew Chow is Boba Guy number two, and he's a data junkie, serving as the finance and operations guy. We have Andrew Chow, Boba Guy number two, on the line to tell us their story. Hello, Andrew. Hello. How's it going? Hi. Thanks very much for joining us today. So I hear. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I hear you guys are obsessed with boba tea. How did that happen? Um, I think it happened almost a little bit by happenstance. Both、um, my business partner Ben and I, we we grew up separately. He grew up in.、Uh, The, we both grew up in the United States, but he grew up in Texas, and I grew up in New Jersey. But we we had had boba tea.、Um, I think our parents both introduced it to us、uh, since we were very little. And then when we met,、uh, we met、uh, working at a the same company, and we, we used to go on boba tea runs together. And then over time, we realized, oh, I think we could do something together. He's my business partner is extremely talented. He's like a, a really smart and intelligent, creative guy.、Mm-hmm. And then I think with my skill set. We we complement each other, and we say let's just do something together. And Boba Guys was essentially what、um, we were most familiar with, and what our skill set I think、uh, was ready for.、Uh, so, what makes a great cup of boba tea?、Uh, that's a good question. I think it's different for everybody.、Um, you know, even Ben and I have、uh, you know different、uh, standards. He likes、uh, like a lot of the, the he likes fruit in some of his drinks.、Um, oh. I'm more of like a milk tea based drink, but、mm. I think maybe. Two things. Well, number one is like the the boba itself.、Mm-hmm. Um, the tapioca has to be perfectly、um, not too hard, not too soft, slightly sweet, not too sweet. So that's the first one. And then the second thing, you know, I think Ben and I both agree. Like it has to be really good quality. And then a lot of the quality we think is in the tea and the milk.、Mm. And so for us, we use really high quality tea and extremely high quality milk. Um, the milk we use is from a local farm here、uh, in the United States.、Mm. And your place is within another restaurant. It's a pop-up restaurant. Why did you decide、yeah. on this particular type of business?、Uh, that's a good question.、Um, you know, honestly, I think a lot of it was just opportunistic, partly、uh-huh. because we we were exploring the idea. I mean, there was in, in here in San Francisco, there's the food truck scene that's really big. Yeah. Um, a lot of great food trucks, and、uh, a lot. Some people just open up a, their own like、uh, physical location right away without even testing.、Mm-hmm. And both Ben and I, we actually、um, both、um, had stints at smaller like t- at technology startups or, or internet startups, and so we we were like, you know, from that world, there's an idea of proof of concept where you want to prove the idea. Is there a market for it? And、mm-hmm. is there、uh, do people get your what you're selling? And for us, we weren't sure if people were willing to get. What we would call like quality or artisanal boba,、mm. um, and so when we thought pop up, that might fit really well. And then we had a lot of friends who did pop up, including the place where we're at, the ramen shop. I and, see. Since they were just a pop up, they kind of、um, paid it forward and helped us and say, you know, I think we know where you're coming from because we were there too. Um, we'll help you guys out. So they're they're very very generous with their space with us.、Mm-hmm. And your milk tea is served in mason jars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That serving that's an idea that I have to say I can't take any credit for. That's from Ben. He, we were talking about different packaging ideas, and we knew we were in the mission. And mason jars are are very mission esque to some other places that do it. But we definitely knew that boba and mason jars. We've never seen that before,、mm-hmm. so it was a pretty easy decision. But、um, Ben was like, "I think we just put in mason jars." And, I, and me, being a business guy, I'm just saying, as long as it doesn't cost too much, I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> right, Bo, uh, uh, Ben, of course, is the art、uh, art guy, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah.、Mm-hmm. yeah. So, how is it working out?、Uh, friends、uh, turned business partners. That relationship. Yeah, that's that's a really interesting relationship. I would say, you know, Ben and I. People always call us the odd couple.、Um, Uh, we were just told that yesterday, actually.、Mm. Um, I was like, "Oh yeah, you're right." I think, you know, in any business, and especially what we see here in California and in San Francisco, all the startup businesses, you usually have the best startups have a combination of the left and right brain people. It's、yeah. like Steve Jobs and Steve、um, Wozniak for Apple, right?、Mm. Um, it's like、uh, I'm trying to think, Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer. 
and, and there's always a, a person who is really creative, who's the idea guy, and then the person who makes sure the idea can actually happen. Yeah. And I think Ben and I are, are very similar. Um, I mean, we both were more creative in general, but he's, like, very, very into, like, design and stuff that I would never be good at. And then at the same time, I make sure that we can actually do it so we don't lose money mm. or we can do it as fast as we can. Because for us, um, scaling is really, really important. Mm. Because if we're really inefficient, we actually would run out of boba. Um, and we still sometimes run out of boba, but um, all of that put together, it, it's mostly using left and right brain. And I think it's a good, it's a really good friendship and relationship. Yeah. Well, you're both sons of Asian immigrants to the U.S., and I uh, read an article where you talk about your parents' sacrifice that enabled you to be where you are today, which is, of course, pretty common among uh, all Asian immigrant families. For what do you feel yeah, most yeah. grateful to your parents today? Honestly, I think we, wrote, we, we talked about it a little bit. It's the work ethic, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think going deeper, Ben and I, we, we hit it off as, as friends uh, from the very, very beginning because we both had a very similar take on life. And he grew up, you know, his parents ran a plastics plant in Texas, and my parents ran a restaurant. And we would both work at for our parents. And I think that was one of those things where our parents put us, or the children, first. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Ben and I are both the older child, too. Mm -hmm. So we both have younger siblings. And so as older children, we, we, we actually felt taken care of the most, actually, because we, we've had it ever since we were born. Yeah. I think we're very, very grateful for that because, they, first of all, I've been very supportive. Ben, ben, he does, you know, creative and design, which is also very atypical in, in Asian America. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for me, I went to school for marketing, and that's also, at the time, very atypical. And so, put together, we, we, we kind of related to that. Mm -hmm. But we're also very grateful. Very funny stories where when we told our parents, our parents are like, "You went to school to make boba." Yeah. And so, <laughs> they, they, at first, they thought we we were gonna you know do it full time, and we're like, "No, we're just seeing it, you yeah. know." But don't be scared if one day we do full time. Yeah. Well, you did say in that uh, article that boba guys came out of pure passion, and you'd be running it very differently mm -hmm. if it came out of necessity. How do, how different oh, would yeah, it be? Yeah. Wow, I, yeah, that's a. You know, we kind of wrote that, mm. but we actually sometimes didn't think too deeply, and you're asking us for a deeper answer. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, I think, um, no, that sentence, I remember coming up with that. But mm. I think, so what I was thinking, and I, uh, I'm going to speak for both Ben and I, but I think he agrees, is that when you've had a passion, mm. you, you, you care more about the customer yeah. and the experience more than about money and all mm. that. And for example of this, we actually just recently, um, we helped um, and participated in a night market this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And um, we tried to do that in San Francisco. And what we saw was that um, we were deciding what price, because we made a special edition jar. Mm -hmm. We could have charged a lot for it. But at the end of the day, we were just like, it just feels wrong. And ultimately, the jars, if somebody is willing to actually, they want to buy the jar and keep it, mm. that's, that's almost like advertising to us. Mm -hmm. And if they're that passionate about it, I think they'll, they'll, you know, it's worth more in the long run. Mm -hmm. And then that's what we mean by, like, if, if we were looking at it from, from just, like, a pure business perspective, it didn't make too much business sense because mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're losing almost a dollar, dollar mm -hmm. fifty, which is, I would say, a pretty substantial part of the profits. So um, I think for Ben and I, we're, like, just very happy if we see people in the city actually mm. talking about boba guys. Mm -hmm. we, we've both been in situations where people say, you know, there's this really good boba built milk tea place and it's in the mission. And then, mm. you know, sometimes we just let them keep on talking so mm -hmm. we don't say we're one of them. <laughs> but then at the end we say, hey, we're one of the boba guys. I'm glad you liked it. And then they go, really? And then everybody just really lights up. Uh. You know, and then we're doing something, you know, it's just boba. Um, it's a small, small thing. It's not like saving the world or anything, but it hopefully um, the passion shows through. Yeah. Um, and our, custo our customers are just as passionate, and hey. we really, really appreciate that, you too. You do have a deep answer there. <laughs> uh, a, <laughs> a lot of young people these days uh, dream of and actually plan uh, to start their own businesses, some on their own and some with friends like yourself. What advice uh, could you give uh -huh. to them? 
you know, you know, Ben and I have a very similar take on on advice in that you know, there's very little advice people can give mm. who have been in it because it's almost different. We we've been in it because we ask a lot of people for advice, and then you know, it, it really depends on the situation. A lot of it didn't apply to us. And I think if we were to kind of simplify it, mm. there's really one only a couple things that we could say if we would call it advice. It, it would be number one is you want to do what you love, mm-hmm. especially if it's startup. We recently kind of like explored the idea of, of like sacrifices, like what you were saying with our parents. And I mean, it was hard because, you know, some days Ben and I are really, really, really tired about you know, just making and washing. We used to wash our own dishes. We still yeah. do all the time. Yeah. Our own containers, um, making sure it's up the code and all of that. And I think it's, you have to have a lot of passion because one day the novelty of doing something new will wear off. Mm-hmm. And what you have left is hopefully your desire for something bigger. And I think that's what we hear from most of the entrepreneurs. And the second one is really not taking two things two things very seriously. Mm. And I think that's actually what, what Ben and I, even though we're very different personalities, we get along um, really well for that reason in that, you know, sometimes we take Boba seriously, but, but in life we don't really take, you know, everything too seriously. Like we thought maybe if Boba guys didn't work, what would happen? Because... Mm-hmm. You know, it's a little embarrassing to say you launched something and, it, and then it failed. But we said, you know, let's just do it. And, you know, if, if it's not going to work, we can tell our grandchildren, okay, well, we, your, your grandpa used to have a milk tea shop. shop. <laughs> you know, now we're actually, you know, like real businessmen or real um, artists, uh, artists and stuff. And so I think that's probably what we would say. Yeah. You know, just don't take, take life or... or the business too seriously, but be, still be very, very passionate about it. Mm. Well, great, Andrew. Thanks very much for sharing your story with us today, and I look forward to tasting your boba tea one of these days, either in San Francisco or in Korea. Oh, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully, if we can ever make out to Korea, you'll be the first to know. All <laughs> right. Well, thanks very much. It was Andrew Chow, boba guy number two, who, who along with uh, Bin Chen, boba guy number one, runs a pop-up restaurant called the Boba Guys in San Francisco. The Boba Guys in...